Hello and welcome everybody to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today this is the long-awaited Constantine Mastery Series Guide. So this is the next installment of the Mastery Series on this channel. Um, first off, I'm going to be cranking out a bunch of stuff uh, today, tomorrow, and then Friday as well. Tomorrow's my birthday, by the way, so happy birthday to me. Um, that being said, uh, Constantine is a unique commander. Um, very simply, he is one of the best defenders in the game when it comes to just being a true and total tank. He has no mobility. He has nothing to do with anything from a skill standpoint except for health, defense, mitigation, attack reduction. Everything about him screams, I just want to take as much damage as possible. Okay. Very suited to an infantry style commander, obviously, and then having the support tree as well. Very interesting too. Garrison, of course, very uh, suited to the garrison talent tree as well, although I would not recommend him for the garrison talent tree. If you're going to use him as gar in garrison, I would use him as a secondary instead of a primary uh, because he does not have the defense talent tree, which is going to be found in your Charles, your Richard, things like that. But that being said, let's jump into the skills. Let's kind of figure out what each of these skills mean. Again, I'm gonna reiterate the force skill being a problem. I've heard back and forth about it possibly working even though it's not shielded. We'll get into it. So first off, this first skill is absolutely amazing. It is an AOE buff for your teammates, including your own armies, and a single target debuff. And it lasts for five seconds, so it's pretty sweet. It says for the next five seconds, uh, decreases target's attack, so one, one target, by 40%. So 40% attack reduction is pretty significant, even for skill damage, that definitely impacts. Also increases troop damage reduction. So we have another commander that has troop damage reduction, uh, which would be uh, Sun Tzu, has a damage reduction buff. Now, it's interesting that it says increases troop damage reduction. It doesn't seem, based off of the, the description, that it applies to skill damage. So just keep that in mind. Still, troop damage reduction is significant, especially when it's to 20 targets. It could be for anybody that's inside of the AoE circle that Constantine generates whenever he casts his skill. Uh, but it increases the troop damage reduction of this commander's army and nearby friendly armies, like I said, by 10%. Again, that is the same thing as um, Sun Tzu's second skill without the uh, infantry health or defense buff. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's pretty significant and that's a pretty, pretty big buff. And that'll also go into what we're going to be going through uh, after the skills, which is going to be the talents and the pairings. All right. So very powerful first skill, very significant to max out first before you move on. All right. Second skill, allegiance increases health of infantry units by 40%. This is a huge buff. Um, I don't know if Lilith has said, Okay, 40 sounds like a good number and just threw it in there because 40% health of infantry buff is huge, especially considering infantry is already tanky and most players that are infantry based are already stacking a ton of defense. So if you're also able to passively increase the health of the army that Constantine is in by 40%, that makes that armor, army super tanky, like it has armor, okay? It's got massive defense, it's got massive health, Again, that's what Constantine is all about, is just taking and soaking damage, right? So with that being said, it's very simple. Infantry unit, 40% health bonus. You can't go wrong with it, especially if you decide you want to stack it with a 10% health rune as well. That'd be very nice. That's 50%. Uh, impasse increases the attack of garrison by, by 10% and attack of the watchtower by 10% when its commander is serving as garrison commander. I've been confirmed that this is not only as in the city, because it does not specifically say while in the city, it's any garrison type environment. So that should mean flags, passes, um, of course your own city, things like that. But anything that you are assigned to as a garrison, this skill will work. So again, having a damage bonus, an attack bonus, I should say, not damage, and also a you know, watchtower for the city itself too when you're in the city, very, very nice. So 10% to both pieces, never anything to sneeze at. Let's move to the fourth skill. This is the, um, the skill that's gotten a lot of attention. Uh, it's the one that's also uh, causing the most back and forth because we've been given direction from 
uh, Julius Caesar and from uh, the developers that there's a very specific way that this skill works. However, I have gotten some comments without proof, keep in mind, so I need proof, guys. But I have gotten some comments where they've said that they've tested it out and it does in fact work. So let's get to that part. The stuff I just talked about does not apply to the heal. The heal works no problem 100% of the time. Once your army gets to 50% strength, so once your army, if you have a 300,000 army capacity, once it hits 150,000, you get a powerful healing effect up to 15,000 healing factor. By um, comparison, uh, Richard's healing factor is only 1,400. Okay, so literally 10 times higher. So usually I get about a 4,000-ish at max troop. At half troop, it's usually about 2,800-ish to 3,000 on Richard. So with that being said, if you want to extrapolate that out, you're looking at roughly 35 to 40K as a heal for Constantine's fourth skill. Okay, so just to give you a hard number to play with, that's pretty significant. That brings you back up to 185, 190, almost 200K, and you're back in the game, especially if it's a close fight that could possibly win you the match. Then the rest of the skill happens. So let me do some explanation really quick. In the Chinese description, which again, this game is made by a Chinese development company. In the Chinese description of the game, this second part of the skill reads something to the effect of, once you have used the heal, you get a, a 30% healing effect uh, decrease on your own, your own army. That's fine. Increases the reduction of the skill damage taken by 10% while using a shield. That is the piece that's in the Chinese description that's not in the English description. I've been asking them to properly update this with the correct terminology if in fact that is the case. Um, we're still waiting. They've been working on a lot of other things, uh, a lot of other updates. The new Ark of Osiris League is coming out. The new Lost Kingdom Season 2 is coming out. There's tons of stuff coming out, guys. So uh, I forgive them for not updating one skill on one commander out of the 30-some that we've got, 38. That being said, that's a critical component. If, in fact, that is the way this is, this fourth skill effectively got nerfed in half because how often... Are you going to have a shield on? First off, you've got to only use it with a certain set of commanders. Uh, how often are you going to have the shield procced from that commander that's not Constantine, by the way, because Constantine doesn't have a shield? Um, how often is that going to be procced? On top of that, um, how often is it going to be procced long enough for a skill to also hit simultaneously? That's where I think that basically completely neuters that part of the skill. It just doesn't make sense. You'd have to have a one in a million shot because one, the shields don't last long enough on Constantine from Charles or from Alex to matter long enough to actually get hit um, while the shield is active. It would literally have to happen at the exact same time, which when does that happen? Uh, and then secondly, even if it was, it would only apply to the shield. It wouldn't apply after the shield's uh, effect is over with. So it does not help um, in any way, shape, or form if that's the way it works. Now, again, I have had people come to me in my comments when I released this information to the public, and they said that they've tested it and it actually works all the time. If that's the case, guys, then this completely turns Constantine back around, and he is now one of the premier infantry defensive commanders in the game. I would use him for your garrison. I would use him for everything, okay? Without that skill damage taken reduction by 40%, he's just a really good open field defense buffer debuffer, okay? So jury's out on that part. Again, very, very good commander overall as far as his utility, how he can be used, his tankiness, all that good stuff. But that four skill makes him a top flight commander, S plus, whatever you want to call it, commander. If we can get that four skill to, to, to operate the way it reads, in English, this is a top flight tier one commander that everybody needs to push for and make uh, a priority to get maxed. Let's move to the fifth skill. So the expertise. This is pretty sweet because not only is it just a new skill that you get extra stuff for, so 15% troop attack and defense, 
it is universal. It is not just for infantry. It's for infantry, archers, and cav, and siege if you really want to go into it. So this is just more stats that keep stacking up for damage, for defense. You've got more stats over here with the health. You've got an attack debuff here with the, the primary skill. You've got more stats for when you're in garrison situations. You've got more damage taken reduction if you happen to have a unicorn situation where you've got a shield and a skill happens at the same time. So hopefully, you know, that kind of gives you some insight into what Constantine is, how he should be used, things like that. Let's jump into the talent build. So again, I'm going to go into the pairings as well, and you'll notice that the majority of the pairings that I've got have Constantine as a second, okay? So keep that in mind as we go through the talent build because again, in an army, the second commander does not get to utilize their talents. It's only the primary. All right, so here is the talent build. Went full, full infantry. And again, the reason being, what is Constantine? He is a stats machine. He is a super tanky infantry commander. Everything in the infantry tree is either march speed, which is also good because of who you're going to pair him up with, but also it's going to be really good for all the stats that you get, especially all the health bonuses that you get in the infantry tree. There are a ton of health bonuses in the infantry tree that stack very nicely with Constantine's second scale, guys. So buffing that tree up was priority. I also was able to get all the goodies for the most part from the um, from the support tree short of Cage of Thorns. So um, if we go over to the support tree, we're able to, to, to spec over to Rejuvenate, which gives you an instant um, whenever it instantly restores 150 rage whenever you use a skill, which is awesome. That's literally, well, what is that? 20-ish, 18-ish percent of, of your bar right there. Uh, and then also you've got Hasty Departure, which is really nice if you're trying to get away from some folks. And to be honest with you, you've got some decent march speed in the infantry skill tree. And again, I'm going to go into pairings and, and tell you where that really starts to pay off. And then we also spec down into loose formation, which gives you an additional 9% skill damage reduction. And then we only had one point left after going into all those different pieces. And that was best used over on the garrison tree, giving you a half percent of defense. Now, let's talk about the support tree because you could take a few things out of the infantry tree, like the, the march speed. There's a couple um, defense extra ones that you could possibly remove if you wanted to, although I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you could get to, say, counterattack. So when healed, and again, this is where you need to rely on other commanders like um, you know pairing with Joan or having a Cleopatra, which who has that uh, as part of their army setups, um, you know things like that. And then also the rest of the um, the talents inside of the support tree require some kind of a heal, whether it be a healing effect improvement or once you're healed, something triggers. So um, the pairings that we pair up with Constantine, which we'll go into next. There's not a whole lot, if any, healers. Um, there's maybe, well, there's two. But again, they're not the top the top tier of what you want to be pairing with uh, Constantine. Okay, so go ahead and uh, soak this in, I guess. At the end of the day, this is very straightforward, but it's also very critical. I would start specking into um, support over to rejuvenate and then fill out the infantry tree and then go ahead and use the last of your points while you're in the, the level 50s range to spec down to loose formation and then snag that last point into garrison, okay? So that's the, the route I would take. All right, let's go to his pairings. So here you go. So double Constantine right there in front of you. <laughs> um, and let me resize this too because it looks like it didn't resize right. There you go. How about that? Professional operation here. All right. So, again, we talked about it earlier. Constantine's talents are good, but they're not the best. Defense tree trumps all when it comes to the blue um, tree if you're not a nuker. Okay. So, when you've got Charles, and um, I will say that I made a mistake here. Uh, Alexander should not be primary. I would have Constantine primary with Alexander secondary. So ignore that. Um, if I can, I have no way to write on the screen, but 
ignore the Alexander primary part. Um, Charles should be primary, and Charles is by, not, by far number one, his best pairing. So it should be Charles and then Constantine. Reason being, again, he has the infantry tree too, so you would go infantry tree, and then spec defensive um, talent tree to loose formation and testudo formation. Okay. Now, if you want to go uber tanky, and I've done that, okay, I went all the way into the defense talent tree up to the last skill, and then I used the rest of my talent points to spec out the infantry talent tree, basically losing, um, I think it's elite soldiers and the speed buffs. That's really all that I lost, which elite soldiers is nice, but it's not a break all, and having the full defensive talent tree uh, is pretty darn sweet, short of having uh, herbal medicine. So... Um, Charles primary, Constantine secondary, that's your number one pairing, best of the best for Constantine because of his fourth skill that requires a shield. Again, if I can clarify that that's not the case, then this may change a little bit and I will do an update. But as of right now, the way it's been explained to me by the developers, um, this is the way that it needs to be. It either needs to be Charles or Alexander. And even Alexander, you know, Primary isn't the worst idea because you need to have the shield on to have the skill damage go off. And if if you're already below 50%, it depends on the back and forth of how your skills are going off. But there may be some testing that needs to be done on if Alexander even makes sense as a primary because um, if, if his skill, if his shield pops, right, um, it may make sense to have the shield on before the next skill goes off from your opponent, if you understand what I'm saying. It's kind of hard to, to get nitty gritty because again, it's such a complicated, um, it's such a complicated skill to wrap your head around with timings and things like that. But I would recommend in the perfect situation with Alexander to have Constantine primary and Alexander secondary. Same thing with Joan of Arc, and really, um, if you want to have a really solid tanky group that does debuffs and buffs for an entire army set. Uh, Joan of Arc is a great pairing with Constantine. I would go Constantine primary in this situation because you can have the full benefit of the infantry tree being super tanky and having that buff group, right? That AOE buff group out there for a very long time instead of having, you know, Joan and Scipio or Joan and, um, and why am I drawing a blank? I can see her face and Oh my goodness, I'm having Cleopatra. <sighs> um, Joan and Cleopatra out there with all your siege units or whatever. This is the best AOE tank buffing group available. Constantine, Joan of Arc. You're gonna be spitting those skills out nonstop because of the support tree, and you're gonna be super tanky because you're gonna be full infantry with all that health, all that defense, all that stuff but, uh, benefiting you. And you're going to have an attack reduction as well for something that you're attacking. So very, very good commander group to have as a buffing group for your entire army, not just you, but everybody around you that's on your side. So very nice. Saladin's another pretty decent one to pair up with. And the reason I say that is because he's kind of got a lot of the same things that Constantine has, but he also has some nuke. So he can dish out a little bit of damage, even being full infantry. You could do Saladin primary, which is just fine, or you can do Constantine primary. Both situations are fine. It's just a matter of do you want to have infantry in your army or do you want to have cav in your army? That's really the only difference. Um, again, you can use Richard as well, but I would prefer to have Richard with Alexander if I had all this together. If you just have Richard and you don't have Charles, Richard will be just fine here. I may do some different specking though because Richard has a heal, so that may change up the uh, support tree to, to utilize some more of those healing benefits like um, let me say let me see some of the names of some of these so you can take a peek at them so elixir having a healing effect enhancement um, counterattack whenever you have a heal troops led by this commander have their attack increased by nine percent um, same thing with uh, let's see no, that's a skill damage one. So yeah, I mean, there's there's two skills in here that actually take a big significant advantage from a heal. So if you're going to have Richard, I may um, take, let's see, that, that would take 10 points out. And I could save 1, 2, 3, 8, 
yeah, I could I could save ten points by taking fleet of foot uh, out. I would lose elite soldiers, and I would drop the two one tick um, defense and health stats to gain those healing benefits. Because again, Richard is going to be chaining uh, his his heals because Richard does that. So uh, I would definitely use that situation versus the one I just showed you. But this is the one, you should be using Constantine as a secondary. Two, if you are using him, Joan of Arc's a, a fantastic pairing uh, for him. And um, if you're going to be pairing him with another legendary, it should be Charles or it should be Alex. Scipio will also work here. Yulji and certainly Sun Tzu, if nothing else, because they are all infantry commanders. So um, that's not going to be bad for you. They're all going to synergize very well. All of their buffs stack together from their skills. All of that's a good, sweet combination uh, and again I would use um, Constantine primary on the Scipio I would use Constantine primary with Yulji I actually would use Sun Tzu primary with Constantine secondary uh, I should have put a P there as well so again a little bit of a blunder there that P from um, Alex should have been down on Sun Tzu that's for the PvP combinations PvE he's not a PvE commander guys if you want to sit there and tank a level 25 Barbarian for 10 minutes, then by all means go for it. Uh, any of these pairings will work just fine. <laughs> that being said, he is not a PvE commander. There's no situation where this guy makes sense to be a PvE commander in any sense of the word. So um, I didn't even go through the, the hassle of listing any commanders that would go with him because really it's going to be the same list as most of the other commanders that are PvP focused like Lohar, Boudicca, Basically, any peacemaker is going to work just fine, or peacekeeper. Um, so some some items to summarize. And again, we just kind of went over all this in length, but I want to summarize a little bit for you. He's got the highest infantry health buff in the game for a two-commander group, so take advantage of that. He's got the biggest heal in the game, albeit one time, once he hits 50% with his four skill, uh, healing 35 to 40,000-ish uh, health. He also is one of the best, if not the best, and I think he is the best, AoE team buffer. Having the, the defense reduction, even though it doesn't have all the different stats that Joan has, I like def uh, damage reduction way better than a couple stats for a few seconds. And if you pair them up together, again, Joan is my third selection here. If you pair them up together, man, what a combo for doing a significant um, benefit to your alliance and really if you have gotten the first skill maxed which i believe it takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 ish 50 to 60 ish legendary sculptures for um for constantine if you're free to play and you bring a constantine joan of arc to the battlefield man what a benefit you're going to be to everybody around you that's not something that can be looked away from or or ignored um, that's a big deal even with just the max first skill on Constantine that's pretty significant and you can go um, you know Joan of Arc primary in that situation if you are uh, free to play and you don't have the capability to get Constantine to level 60 that being said it's going to be not as good of a build because you won't have the infantry tree which gives you all those sweet buffs from a stat standpoint uh, and all the different uh, counterattack and damage stuff that comes along with it um, you would probably want to go mixed troop in that situation, which again is just a nightmare. I would definitely recommend Constantine primary um, and any you know, just get him as high as possible. Uh, make sure you've got all the stuff from the support tree that we talked about to make sure that you can re uh, regen as much rage as possible, and then just get as deep into the infantry tree as possible uh, as you can. And I would go first towards the hold the line side of the infantry tree because snare of thorns is just not that big of a deal downside to this guy again the fourth skill is so up in the air right now um i'm really hoping that the people that have been commenting on my channel are correct and it actually works i am going to try and do some testing uh as quickly as i can on this guy just to see right now though he is only um one skill into his fourth skill so it's going to be very difficult to see uh without really kind of analyzing a battle log if the um if the reduction is happening so um because the a ten percent can be losing twenty thousand troops is ten percent skill damage reduction. So we need to figure that out and figure out how to test it. We need to get somebody that's got a max four skill on Constantine. So 
With that being said, uh, I think I've beaten him into the ground, but he's such a great commander, guys. He's a really good commander for, for particular purposes. If it's not for um, those purposes, though, you want to avoid him at all costs. So he is very, very good at what he does, and he's not a jack-of-all-trades commander. You need to use him wisely and specifically the way I've described on this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. Um, I've noticed done, I've done some analytics, and about 60% of you guys that watch my videos uh, are not subscribed. So please subscribe if you have not already done so. This stuff is coming to you as much as possible almost every day, and I hope you've enjoyed. See y'all later. Take care. Have a good one.